Well, would you look at that? It's finally not raining. So that means I'm going to finally get to install the rest of the solar panels. Now, I actually installed one of them a while back. I never mentioned that in the other video when I did the racking system. But when I uploaded that video, I had actually already installed one panel. So now I'm actually going to install the other three. Now, I'm probably going to have to take the other one down because when I put it up, I just kind of eyeball the measurements for the brackets. So I probably have to kind of realign everything. So I'm going to go ahead, take it down and redrill the holes so that they line up with the other brackets and then I'm going to put them back up and then line them up, make sure everything's good. And I'm not going to connect them today, except I'm just going to connect the one temporarily because I ordered some shrink wrap because I need to make the wires longer and I completely forgot about how I'm actually going to splice them together. I ended up buying some heavy duty solder and everything. So what I'll do is I'll shrink wrap it. So I'm just waiting for the shrink wrap to come in. So for now, I'm just going to have the one panel running, but at least they're going to be mounted. So connecting them is going to take like five, 10 minutes at most. So once I have all the equipment, it's not gonna be a big deal. And then from there, I'll finally have all four of them running. Now, originally I was gonna put them in two groups of series and then put those two groups in parallel. Well, I think I'm actually gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna do two groups of parallel and then put those two groups in series. And the reasoning for that is, it's just gonna make the wiring easier. I'm just gonna have end up, at the end, I'm just gonna end up with two wires instead of four. And I don't have to worry about combining them when you're working with thick gauge wiring, it gets a little bit trickier as far as combining them. You can't just use wire nuts. I guess with the eight gauge wiring, I kind of could, but it's not really proper. So I'm gonna have the two wires and they're just gonna go straight into the charge controller. It's gonna make things easier. I should maybe put a cut off in between. I'll figure that out later. I still have to build the box where all this stuff goes in. I want to do that and just never got around to it. So yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and start installing the four solar panels. I might have spoke too soon, it looks like it might rain. I'm gonna try to get it done anyway and hope for the best.
all done so the four panels are up now some of the footage I showed at the beginning it was actually prepared before it wasn't actually done today the drilling on the brackets and all that so that was done a while back and I was just waiting for the perfect day to actually mount the panels and it was today so now they're mounted and right now the way I have it set up is the two first ones are actually in parallel and they're currently feeding the charge controller and right now I still have a temporary setup that I kind of cobbled together it's, it's not the best but it works so right now I have 200 watts of solar going into the charge controller and a while ago I had 100 and even before that, like before I even started on this project, I had 60 watts. So I went from 60 watts to 100 watts and now 200 watts. So now I'm very curious to see if it'll be able to keep up even in the winter. Like even now it's getting dark, it gets dark really early and it doesn't get light until late. So it'll be interesting to see if it can at least keep up with a small load because it only has so many hours in a day that it can charge and then the battery has to keep up for the rest of the night. So it needs to be able to put that much charge back in in a short amount of time. So I'll see how that goes. Now the way I was going to wire this before, is it, like I said before, I was going to have two groups in series. So two panels in series. And then those two groups would be in parallel together. Now that would probably be the best way of doing it. But it, it's just a bit more complicated physically with the wiring. Like you have to splice the two wires together and all that. So this way, the way I did it now is I use these special splitter cables where it can basically combine two panels and then you get your negative and positive from the two combined. So basically this is just like having two 200 watt panels in series once I'm done. Uh, right now it won't reach, so I'm just going to get an extension cord with the solar connectors just to extend it over and then I can just put them in series. So that won't be a big deal. And I'm still waiting for some shrink wrap to arrive because I bought some wiring. Pretty thick gauge stuff. I bought way more because originally it was going to have like two runs, but I'm only going to have one run, so two wires. And I actually like, I want to overestimate because you don't want to run out of wire halfway through a project. So this is going to be for the solar panels, which again, it's way more than I need. And then this is going to be for the battery. Now this is number three cable. I was trying to get number two and I they couldn't, they didn't have it. So I got number three, but turns out number three is actually good for 100 amps 
so I should be okay. Now, I was going to go 200 amps, and I might still do that. If I do that, all I have to do is double these. But really, I only need 100 amps. That will give me about 1,200 watts max of power like out of the inverter. And right now, I have a 350-watt inverter. So I think I'm going to put 100 amps, and then I can just use one run of these. And again, this is more than I need. I mean, I can always use wire for other projects, so it doesn't hurt to buy more than what you need. This was like 150 bucks worth of wiring. It's all cheap. Yeah, so this is it for this video, and thanks for watching. Bye.